शोल्डर जॉइंट मूवमेंट अकर शोल्डर फ्लैक्शन शोल्डर एक्सटेंशन शोल्डर अबडक्शन शोल्डर अडक्शन लेटरल और एक्सटर्नल रोटेशन मीडियल और इंटरनल रोटेशन शोल्डर फ्लैक्शन एक्सिस एंड प्लेन मूवमेंट अकर इन फ्रंटल एक्सिस एंड सजाइटल प्लेन रेकमेंडेड टेस्टिंग पोजिशन पेशेंट पोजिशन शुड बी सुपाइन लाइन विथ नी फ्लैक्सड एंड शोल्डर शुड बी जीरो डिग्री ऑफ फ्लैक्शन एक्सटेंशन एबडक्शन अडक्शन सुपिनेशन एंड प्रोनेशन विथ पाम फेसिंग टूवर्ड्स दी बॉडी स्टेबिलाईजेशन स्टेबिलाईज दी स्केप्युलर रीजियन टू प्रिवेंट दी पोस्टीरियर टिल्टिंग एलिवेशन and upward rotation of the scapular region and to fill it is normal form goniometry alignment center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral aspect of the greater tubercle proximal arm should be parallel to the mid axillary line of the thorax distal arm should be parallel to the midline of the humerus take the lateral epicondyle as a reference normal range of motion 0 to 180 degree in this picture you can see the center of the fulcrum is at the lateral aspect of the greater tubercle proximal arm is parallel to the mid axillary line of the thorax distal arm is parallel to the midline of the humerus lateral epicondyle is taken as the reference shoulder extension axis and planes movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane recommended testing position patient position should be prone lying face away from the shoulder being tested pillow is not used under the head shoulder should be 0 degree of abduction adduction supination pronation the elbow should be slightly flexed to prevent the restriction in the movement with palm facing towards the body stabilization Stabilize the scapula at the inferior angle to prevent the anterior tilting and elevation. End fill is normal form. Goniometry alignment is same as the flexion. Normal range of motion is 0 to 60 degree. Goniometry alignment is same as the flexion. So in this picture you can see the fulcrum is placed at the lateral aspect of the greater tubercle. Proximal arm is parallel to the mid axillary line of the thorax. Distal arm is parallel to the midline of the humerus. Take ref friends as the lateral epicondyle shoulder abduction axis and planes movement occur in sagittal axis and frontal plane recommended testing position the patient position should be supine lying with shoulder 0 degree of flexion extension shoulder should be in lateral rotation with palm facing anteriorly stabilization stabilize the scapular region to prevent the upward rotation and elevation of scapula end fill is normal form goniometry alignment center the fulcrum of goniometer over the anterior aspect of the acromion process proximal arm should be parallel to the anterior aspect of the sternum dorsal the arm should be parallel to the anterior midline of the humerus take the reference as the medial epicondyle normal range of motion is 0 to 180 degree fulcrum is kept at the anterior aspect of the acromion process proximal arm is parallel to the sternum and distal arm is parallel to the anterior midline of the humerus medial epicondyle is taken as the reference shoulder adduction axis and planes movement occur in sagittal axis and frontal plane recommended testing position stabilization and fill and goniometry alignment is same as the abduction normal range of motion is 180 to 0 degree shoulder lateral or external rotation axis and planes movement occur in vertical axis and transverse plane recommended testing position patient position is supine lying with shoulder 90 degree of abduction and the elbow is fixed at the 90 degree with neutral forearm stabilization stabilize the distal end of the humerus and fill is normal form goniometry alignment center the fulcrum of goniometer over the olecranon process proximal arm should be parallel to the floor distal arm should be parallel to the ulnar bone take the reference as the styloid process normal range of motion is 0 to 90 degree center the fulcrum of goniometer over the olecranon process proximal arm should be perpendicular to the floor distal arm should be parallel with the ulnar bone ulnar styloid process is taken as the reference shoulder medial or internal rotation axis and planes recommended testing position stabilization end fill 
and goniometry alignment is same as the external rotation. Normal range of motion is 0 to 70 degree. Patient position is supine lying with shoulder 90 degree of abduction, elbow is 90 degree of flexed with neutral forearm. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the olecranon process. Proximal arm should be perpendicular to the floor. Distal arm should be perpendicular to the ulnar bone and take reference as the ulnar styloid process. Elbow joint movement occur is flexion and extension. Elbow flexion, axis and plane. Movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position is supine lying with zero degree of shoulder flexion, extension and abduction so that the arm is close to the body. Place the pad under the arm to allow the full elbow extension. Forearm is in supination and palm is facing upwards. Stabilization. Stabilize the distal end of the humerus. End fill is soft. Goniometry alignment. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Proximal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the humerus. Distal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the radius. Take the reference as the radial styloid process. Normal range of motion is 0 to 150 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral epicondyle. Proximal arm is parallel to the lateral midline of the humerus. Distal arm is parallel to the lateral midline of the radius. Take the reference as the radial styloid process. Elbow extension, axis and plane, recommended testing position, stabilization and goniometry alignment is same as the elbow flexion and fill is hard. Normal range of motion is 150 to 0 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral epicondyle. Proximal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the humerus. Distal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the radius. Take the reference as the radial styloid process. Radio ulnar joint, supination, axis and plane. Movement occur in longitudinal axis and transverse plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position is sitting with the shoulder 0 degree of flexion, extension, abduction, adduction and rotation so that arm is close to the body. Elbow should be at 90 degree of flexion and forearm should be in mid prone position. Stabilization. Stabilize the distal end of the humerus. End fill is normal form. Goniometry alignment. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the medially and proximally to the ulnar styloid process. Proximal arm should be parallel to the humerus. Distal arm should be parallel to the styloid process of the radius and ulnar. Normal range of motion is 0 to 80 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the medially and proximally to the ulnar styloid process. Proximal arm should be parallel to the humerus. Distal arm should be parallel to the radius and ulnar styloid process. Pronation, axis and plane. Movement occur in vertical axis and transverse plane. Recommended testing position. Stabilization and goniometry is same as the supination. End fill is hard. Normal range of motion is 0 to 80 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the laterally and proximally to the ulnar styloid process. Proximal arm should be parallel to the humerus. Distal arm should be parallel to the radius and ulnar styloid process. Wrist joint movement occur is flexion, extension, radial deviation and ulnar deviation. Flexion. Axis and plane. Movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position should be sitting with the shoulder 90 degree of abduction and elbow should be 90 degree of flexion. Forearm should be pronated with palm facing towards the ground and avoid radius and ulnar deviation. Stabilization. Stabilize the radius and ulnar to prevent the supination and pronation of the forearm. End fill is normal form. Goniometry alignment. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral aspect of the wrist over the triquetral. Proximal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the ulna. Take the reference as the olecranon process. Distal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the fifth metacarpal. Alternate method of the goniometry alignment. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the capitate on the dorsal aspect of the wrist joint. Proximal arm should be parallel to the dorsal midline of the forearm. Distal arm should be parallel to the third metacarpal bone. Normal range of motion is 0 to 80 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral aspect of the wrist over the triquetrum. Proximal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the ulna. Distal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the fifth metacarpal. Take the reference as the olecranon process. Extension, axis and plane. Movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane. Recommended testing position. 
patient position should be sitting position shoulder should be 90 degree of abduction and elbow should be of 90 degree of flexion forearm should be in pronated position with palm facing towards the ground avoid the radial and ulnar deviation stabilization goniometry alignment alternate method of the goniometry alignment are the same as the flexion of the wrist and full is normal form Normal range of motion is 0 to 70 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral aspect of the wrist. Proximal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the ulna. Distal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the fifth metacarpal bone. Take the reference as the olecranon process. Radial deviation, axis and plane. Movement occur in sagittal axis and frontal plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position is sitting position next to supporting surface. with shoulder 90 degree of abduction and elbow 90 degree of flexion forearm should be in pronated position with palm facing towards the ground stabilization stabilize the radius and ulna to prevent the pronation and supination of the forearm end fill is hard goniometry alignment center the fulcrum of goniometer over the dorsal aspect of the wrist on the capitate proximal arm should be parallel to the dorsal midline of the forearm take the reference as the lateral epicondyle of the humerus distal arm should be dorsal midline of the third metacarpal normal range of motion is 0 to 20 degree center the fulcrum of goniometer over the dorsal aspect of the wrist over the capitate proximal arm should be dorsal midline of the forearm distal arm should be dorsal midline of the third metacarpal bone take the reference as the lateral epicondyle ulna deviation axis and plane movement occur in sagittal axis and frontal plane recommended testing position stabilization and goniometry alignment are same as the radial deviation and fill is normal form range of motion is 0 to 80 degree center the fulcrum of goniometer over the dorsal aspect of the wrist over the capitate proximal arm is dorsal midline of the forearm distal arm is the dorsal midline of the third metacarpal bone take the reference as the lateral epicondyle hip joint movement occur flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation hip flexion axis and planes movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane recommended testing position patient position is supine lying with 0 degree of abduction adduction and rotation stabilization stabilize the pelvis rotation and posterior tilting and feel is soft goniometry alignment center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral aspect of the hip joint taking the reference as the greater trochanter proximal arm should be lateral midline of the pelvis distal arm should be lateral midline of the humerus taking reference as the epicondyle normal range of motion is 0 to 120 degree center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral aspect of the hip joint the proximal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the pelvis distal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the humerus take the reference as the lateral epicondyle hip extension axis and planes movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane recommended testing position patient position is prone lying with hip 0 degree of abduction adduction and rotation knee should be extended stabilization stabilize the pelvis to prevent the anterior tilting or rotation and fill is normal form goniometry alignment is same as the hip flexion normal range of motion is 0 to 30 degree center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral aspect of the hip joint proximal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the pelvis distal arm should be parallel to the lateral midline of the humerus take the reference as the lateral epicondyle hip abduction axis and planes movement occur in sagittal axis and frontal plane recommended testing position patient position is supine lying with hip 0 degree of flexion extension and rotation knee should be extended stabilization stabilize the pelvis to prevent the rotation and lateral tilting and fill is normal form goniometry alignment center the fulcrum of goniometer over the anterior superior iliac spine proximal arm should be an imaginary horizontal line from the anterior superior iliac spine to the another anterior superior iliac spine distal arm should be at the anterior midline of the humerus taking reference as the patella normal range of motion is 0 to 45 degree center the fulcrum of goniometer over the anterior superior iliac spine proximal arm is at the 
horizontal imaginary line from one anterior superior iliac spine to another anterior superior iliac spine. Distal arm is at anterior midline of the humerus. Take the reference as the patella. Reproduction, axis and planes. Movement occur in sagittal axis and frontal plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position is supine line with zero degree of flexion, extension and rotation. Knee should be extended and hip is abducted. Stabilization. Stabilize the pelvis to prevent the lateral tilting. End fill is normal form. Goniometry alignment is same as the hip abduction. Normal range of motion is 0 to 30 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the anterior superior iliac spine. Proximal arm is at the imaginary line from one anterior superior iliac spine to another anterior superior iliac spine. Distal arm is at the anterior midline of the humerus. Take the reference as the patella. Hip medial rotation. Axis and planes. Movement occur in vertical axis and transverse plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position is sitting with knee flexed 90 degree. Hip is zero degree of abduction and adduction. Stabilization. Stabilize the distal end of the femur to prevent the abduction, adduction and further flexion of the hip. Avoid rotation and lateral tilting of the pelvis. End fill is normal form. Goniometry alignment. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the anterior aspect of the patella. Proximal arm should be perpendicular to the floor. Distal arm should be anterior midline of the leg. Normal range of motion is 0 to 45 degree. Hip lateral rotation. Axis and planes. Movement occur in vertical axis and transverse plane. Recommended testing position. Stabilization. End fill. Goniometry alignment and the normal range of motion is same as the medial rotation. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the anterior aspect of the patella. Proximal arm should be perpendicular to the floor. Distal arm should be anterior aspect of the leg. Knee joint movement occur is knee flexion and knee extension. Knee flexion, axis and planes movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position is supine lying with knee extension. Hip should be zero degree of extension, abduction and adduction. Stabilization. Stabilize the femur to prevent the abduction, adduction and rotation of the hip. End fill is soft and normal form. Goniometry alignment. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral epicondyle of the femur. Proximal arm should be at lateral midline of the femur. And take the reference as the greater trochanter. Distal arm should be at lateral midline of the fibula and take the reference as the lateral malleolus. Normal range of motion is 0 to 135 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral epicondyle of the femur. Proximal arm should be at the lateral midline of the femur and take the reference as the greater trochanter. Distal arm should be at the lateral midline of the fibula and take the reference as lateral malleolus. Knee extension. Axis and planes, movement occur in frontal axis and sagittal plane. Recommended testing position. Patient position is prone lying with hip zero degree of flexion, extension, abduction, adduction and rotation. Stabilization. Stabilize the hip to maintain the neutral position. End fill is normal form. Goniometry alignment is same as the knee flexion. Normal range of motion is 135 to 0 degree. Center the fulcrum of goniometer over the lateral epicondyle of the femur. Proximal arm should be at the lateral midline of the femur. Distal arm should be at the lateral midline of the fibula. Take the reference as the greater trochanter and the lateral malleolus.